name is Heather Shu. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Medicine, and I'm going to be talking about my research agenda related to optimizing value-based care for health equity. So I think of this as population health data science um, in service to health policy change. Um, so value-based care um, aims to improve healthcare value by linking provider reimbursement to measures, measures of healthcare quality. It's really the main crux of healthcare reform over the past 20 years. And there are really two levers um, for improving healthcare value. You can think about it as either increasing quality or decreasing cost. Value-based care programs are really um, centered on measurement. So you can't fix what you can't measure. Um, and improve value. Um, and so uh, measurement lies kind of as a cornerstone of value-based care because um, these programs tie um, uh, financial incentives or financial penalties um, to, uh, to various quality measures. Um, one of the outstanding questions of value-based care is whether value-based care can actually improve health equity. This has been a topic of many, many commentaries and a lot of great hope, um, but there's really no evidence base behind it. Um, here in Massachusetts, we have a really um, exciting opportunity to add to this evidence base and to start creating it. So um, Massachusetts um, transformed its Medicaid program back in 2018 to a value-based care model um, by changing from a fee-for-service model um, to an accountable care organization model of healthcare delivery. Um, and for um, the first time anywhere in the country, uh, they set their payment model um, using risk adjustment um, that accounted not only for medical complexity, but also for social complexity. So in general, when payments are set in value-based care models, um, you account for um, medical complexity and that somebody with diabetes or hypertension will probably cost more to care for. Um, than somebody without those conditions, um, but they generally ignore behavioral health conditions as well as social complexity. Uh, one of the particular um, measures of social complexity that Massachusetts took into account was housing status. And so uh, they developed risk adjustment models um, that accounted for housing status, um, allowing for patients who are um, experiencing homelessness um, to, um, uh, for providers to be paid more for, um, for the care of people experiencing homelessness. And that was based on data that suggests that uh, um, somebody who's experiencing homelessness costs about two and a half times more to take care of on an annual basis than someone without. Um, and so at um, Boston Medical Center in particular, we, um, uh, we have a great opportunity to take a look at whether or not this is going to work. Um, uh, so BMC Health System um, uh, now actually um, is a Medicaid managed care organization for 40% of Massachusetts Medicaid or Mass Health recipients. So that's about 560,000 people here in the state. Um, and my research agenda centers around understanding whether this value-based care transformation um, improved or did not improve the quality of care um, and adequacy of payment, in particular to safety net healthcare providers. So uh, healthcare providers that are caring for a disproportionate share of people who, um, who may have um, uh, adverse health effects from social conditions. Um, and my goal is to identify opportunities for payment model improvement. And this is where the health um, population health data science comes in because that involves linkage um, between claims data, which are what are traditionally used um, for payment models um, to other sources of data that might provide um, a little bit more context um, for how people actually live in the world. Um, uh, and one of my particular areas of interest is addressing measurement bias in um, Massachusetts payment payment model in terms of identifying people with unhoused status. Right now, Massachusetts is using um, ICD-10 codes, so billing diagnoses to identify people um, with housing problems, as well as um, 
having three address changes in a year. And so anybody who's worked with college students knows that most college students have, probably have several address changes um, in a year. So that may not be um, the most accurate way of defining that population. Um, and so um, my goal with this is uh, really to identify opportunities for value-based care optimization because of how poorly the healthcare safety net has fared in these programs thus far. So uh, safety net hospitals in particular tend to receive um, fewer financial bonus payments and more financial penalties in value-based care environments. And this leads to a vicious cycle of um, resource insecurity um, within the healthcare safety net, um, which puts the healthcare safety net more at risk for not being able to provide adequate quality care um, for the neediest patients. Um, and so to improve population health overall and to improve healthcare equity in particular, we need to reverse this trend of decreased bonus payments and increased financial penalties for the healthcare safety net. And I think one of the ways um, that we can approach doing that is by addressing measurement bias and, um, and in particular understanding whether this Massachusetts experiment um, in um, risk adjustment for social complexity actually uh, works as intended. <laughs> 